lead poisoning how lead causes poisoning is via inhalation absorption from the skin or mucous membrane and ingestion the mechanism of action of lead is that it causes spasm of capillaries and arterioles and also gets deposited in the brain and peripheral nervous system there are many sources of lead such as the acetates of lead oxides of lead carbonates or white lead tetroxide or sindoor also known as red lead chromate of lead for example yellow chrome and most importantly tetraethyl lead which is the most poisonous looking at acute lead poisoning the symptoms will be the same as those in arsenic mercury poisoning except that the diarrhea which is replaced by constipation the stool will be dark and black with offensive smell why because lead sulfide is formed we'll divide the symptoms uh, system wise into the git the nervous system muscle and peripheral nervous system and those on the kidney the git symptoms include metallic astringent taste in the mouth dry throat thirst nausea and vomiting and there is colic like pain in the abdomen and it can be relieved by pressure there is constipation and black stool the nervous system symptoms are more common with tetraethyl lead leading to lead encephalopathy it is characterized by headache sleeplessness tremor of eyes mouth and fingers sometimes paralysis loss of vision hallucination excitement delirium apathy convulsions permanent mental changes or insanity the muscles and peripheral nervous system will show cramps in the legs arthralgia and paralysis of limbs while the kidney will be affected by producing scanty urine coming to the fatal dose and fatal period of lead if the absorbed lead is about 0.5 grams in the body it is fatal 20 grams of lead acetate is fatal 4 grams of lead carbonate and tetraethyl lead if in pure form only 1 to 2 drops will cause severe symptoms the fatal period is about 2 to 3 days and as i mentioned earlier acute poisoning of lead is rare mostly lead poisoning is chronic remember that now if there is a case of acute poisoning the treatment will will involve two things if the poison is ingested we'll do stomach wash with 1% solution of magnesium or sodium sulfate which will convert the lead into lead sulfate which will be washed out with ample water morphine and atropine is given for the painful colic bowel is cleared at regular intervals to get rid of the re-excreted lead calcium rich diet such as milk calcium salts vitamin d etc will favor skeletal deposition of lead edta and penicillamine are the antidotes for lead dialysis both peritoneal and hemodialysis can be done and the rest of the treatment will be symptomatic if there is skin contact with tetraethyl lead we should wash the area with kerosene within 15 minutes to remove the poison quantitatively Unfortunately if the patient dies the postmortem appearances will be that of gastroenteritis and black colored offensive stool will be found in the large intestine the gastroenteritis is manifested as congested mucosa which is eroded in patches now lead poisoning is nearly always chronic it is also known as plumpism or saturnism or saturnine poisoning now people can be chronically exposed to lead in industry at homes and drinking water supplied through lead pipes can cause lead poisoning and also mobilization of lead in deposits in the body paint industry glazing battery industry plumbing diamond cutting smelting welding polishing tinning color and dye industries can expose workers to chronic lead poisoning 
घी यूज इन टेंस और फूड कुकड इन टेंट वेसल्स कैन ऑल्सो कॉज लेड पॉइजनिंग एंड लास्टली मोबिलाइजेशन ऑफ लेड इन डिपॉजिट्स इन द बॉडी वेन देर इज एसिडोसिस द डिपॉजिटेड लेड इज मोबिलाइज फ्रॉम द बोन विच कैन मैनिफेस्ट दैन एज एक्यूट और क्रॉनिक केसेज ऑफ लेड पॉइजनिंग Now one thing to remember is that the exposure to lead is chronic but the symptoms can be acute. There will be pale face, anemia with punctate basophilia, lead line, colic and constipation, paralysis, encephalopathy, renal vascular manifestations, reproductive system manifestations. and some general symptoms now the pale face is the earliest and most consistent sign it is due to the vasospasm of vessels of the face the blood smear will also show hypochromic anemia with punctate basophilia which means presence of uh, basophilic granules in the rbc cytoplasm because lead interferes with porphyrin metabolism there will be a bluish black line due to the sub epithelial deposition of lead sulfide granules on the gums at the junction of uh, the teeth and the gums there is severe colic and constipation the colic is of intestine renal colic ureters and also uterus and a severe constipation severe chronic constipation known as obstinate constipation or dry belly ache is also a sign of lead poisoning there is paralysis which is a late manifestation in some of the people it can manifest as wrist drop and foot drop due to nerve and muscle atrophy there is also lead encephalopathy manifesting as recurrent convulsions mental deterioration and optic atrophy reno vascular complications will be due to hypertension because it is a vasoconstricting agent and there is also arteriosclerotic nephritis the reproductive system in both the sexes is also affected leading to sterility in females there is dysmenorrhea amenorrhea and abortion or dead fetus the general symptoms will be that of weakness anorexia foul breath metallic taste vertigo etc how to diagnose a patient of chronic lead poisoning clinically the colic the punctate basophilia the blue black line on gums the encephalopathy and palsy the lead and porphyrins in the urine there will also be transverse opaque bands on long bone ends and on x-ray the liver will appear opaque mainly in tetraethyl lead poisoning how to treat a chronic lead poisoning patient first remove the patient from the source and secondly we try to extract the stored lead for that we use edta and british anti leucite agent their combination is more effective they will mobilize the stored lead and it will be excreted in urine if lead paralysis has developed massage to the affected muscles is helpful i don't know how well in cases of death due to lead poisoning the post mortem appearances will be the same as the clinical picture there will be hyperplasia of erythroblasts and leukoblast in the bone marrow due to the anemia there will be decreased fat cells and for analysis long bones teeth nails etc should be preserved the medico legal importance of chronic lead poisoning is such that acute poisoning is rare it is not used for homicide although children can be poisoned accidentally by eating the paint on cribs and toys lead monoxide can be used by quacks for a remedy for syphilis and vermilion or sindoor used by the hindu women can also cause lead poisoning chronically 
food and water contamination can also do that and another aspect is that red lead is also used as a cattle poison that's all for lead poisoning